By the late 60s, Ray Weiss, who's a dear friend and a beautiful person and works down the street at MIT, um, was a young professor at MIT. He was just hired and started a gravity research program. And they asked him to teach a class in this complex subject of general relativity. And he tells me what I knew about general relativity, you could stick in this finger. <laughs> but he says yes. And because, um, you know, he has this whole gravity program. He can't say, I don't understand general relativity. And he describes that he was bumbling. He says, I was bumbling, but the students didn't walk out because the whole while he was trying to imagine, how would you measure space time? How would I understand this in a visceral way, in a physical way? And he dreams of this experiment. Let's say the sun blew up and waves in the shape of space time traveled eight minutes to get to the Earth to tell us that the sun wasn't where it used to be and that our orbit needs to adjust on the curves in space time. And he imagines, what if I hung mirrors that would bob on the wave as it passed? And I shine, you know, I, I put a laser between them, and the laser would keep track of the location of the mirrors. And it would tell me if the mirrors were bobbing on the wave. This is much like something bobbing on the ocean. And, um, and uh, he called it a haiku. It turns out there aren't clocks precise enough to do that. So he went one step further. He said, imagine I made an L-shaped instrument so that mirrors at the ends of the L bobbed in the wave. And I, I put the laser shining between the mirrors. When the laser recombined back at the apex, if the mirrors didn't move, it would recombine perfectly. And if the mirrors oscillated on the wave, like things floating on the ocean, it would recombine imperfectly. And you could measure that. And, um, and he called it a haiku. He said you would think nothing would come of it. He started to build an, an instrument that was one and a half meters long in the Plywood Palace. Do you all know about the Plywood Palace? This is part of your local history. The Plywood Palace, otherwise known as Building 20, was a shoddy structure thrown up on the MIT campus during the war effort. It was meant to encourage research in radar and microwave engineering, and it was meant to be up for 10 years at most and torn down. It was a crappy structure that inspired its inhabitants to violate it liberally. <laughs> and they were so inspired by being able to punch holes through walls and tap things from the pipes and puncture holes through the ceiling that nine Nobel Prizes came out of the Plywood Palace, possibly a tenth <laughs> with this discovery.